Well, it's a Zaya Festival time in North Carolina. Saturday morning, I'm heading out to a job. The customer says their compressor is dead, so they had someone look at it and the compressor is down. And they want to price on changing it over the whole unit. Um, so I'm going to take a look at that. I also got preventive maintenance today. Uh, large three systems on a daycare across the street. This is a familiar customer. I've had several videos with them in it. Uh, but first and foremost, I'm going to McDonald's. And I'm going to head up there and take a look at our compressor. Well, I'm leaving the uh, first house where I was checking out the compressor. Uh, another company had come in and said the compressor was uh, bad. I always, you had to always have to go in and check behind another company because you don't know if it was another company or some dude or some dude's cousin or something like that. You always want to, especially compressors, because people get that wrong, I don't know, a lot of the time. So what I did is I came in and checked it, and it was in fact grounded. So that was the case. So I'm giving them a price on a new system. And this is a trailer, so it's a coil and a heat pump. So i got to work that up, and hopefully I get that one. Either that or a compressor, but the compressor is so old. Anyway, that I just figured a new system would be best. So we'll see. On to the next one. Here was our first unit for our preventive maintenance for the spring here. It's an American Standard Heritage 11. Uh, I did the fall service video on this same unit. This is one of three, and this is the newest of the three. Uh, this one's from, I think, 1999 or 2000, whenever this edition was built on the back of the daycare. So we're going to start with this one, run through it, and then get to the other ones. Uh, the best one's going to be the 1987 General Electric package unit. That's the best. Okay, the first thing I do is checking the dual run capacitor. Checking the Herm side. We're at 39, it calls for 40, so we're good to go. So next I'll switch it over to the fan side. Calls for 5, we have 5, so we are good to go there too. Well, I ohmed out the, well, I checked it with the Sepco Mega Ohm meter, the whole unit, and it showed that it had a very low resistance to ground. Uh, not so much that it was tripping breakers, but uh, just an indication that something was going wrong. So I narrowed it down and actually narrowed it down to the crankcase heater on the compressor. So I kind of disconnected that and put it out of the way until we're able to find a solution for that. Um, can't really get into where the crankcase heater is, it's mounted internally. But we can perhaps put another one on there. I'll have to uh, investigate that. We have a dirty coil here we're going to have to clean off too here shortly. But there's some of our excitement so far. There's a new contactor star capacitor, potential relay, run capacitor, and defrost controller. The air handler for the Heritage 11 is the variable speed. It's located in the crawl space. Uh, it's an enclosed crawl space, which you think is nice, but of course, every time I come down here, there's water in this crawl space. There's something's wrong. Either the humi dehumidifier is not running, and look, that's level. Look at that thing. It's leaking out the bottom of it running over to the sump and uh, a lot of it's not making it over to the sump. That's all water right there. It's right by the access door like every time I come here. So it's like money down the drain because this costs thousands and thousands of dollars to do and it's just for not because it's half-ass crap. But let me crawl across the lake here and go to the air handler. Uh, there's a couple of videos this air handler stars in. You see the coil access there is where I uh, changed the return duct last year. Just ran new return duct all the way up to the plenum, line the plenum upstairs in metal because uh, there was a lot of leakage on the return side, a lot of dirt in there. It's kind of gross. So I put this access door in there so I could check the coil every year, which is what I'm about to do. And I pulled the evaporator on a different occasion and cleaned it out. It's in there. So, and this evaporator is almost toast. I mean, it's just falling apart. So we're seeing how long we can keep it in operation. Okay, here's our evaporator coil. You can see up top here still dirty as hell. Uh, there's not much you can do about it. I spray the foam on it to clean it off. But if I were to brush that, it would fall off. I mean, it's not, it looks pretty rough in the picture. It's not quite as bad as that. But if I move my finger across where that suction line runs, pieces of it would actually fall off. So I can't brush it because it would just fall into pieces. <coughs> Down the bottom is a little bit better. But top all right, she's all foamed up. I'm going to foam her from both sides and see if we can get some of that crap off of there without destroying the uh, coil. And then we'll move on to uh, starting the unit up outside and checking some of those aspects. All right, the Heritage 11 is up and running. I'm going to take some amp draws. Uh, I'm not going to finish the charge stuff until I wash that coil off. So I'm just going to get a couple of amp draws here. 
Uh, technically, the amp draws could be a little bit higher now than it will be then. I'm just going to get a little rough idea to see if we have a problem. Uh, our compressor amp draw could be slightly higher with the dirty outdoor coil, so we can double check that when we get done. Here for the common line on the compressor. Got about 7.2 there, so far. 7.2. And we go for the common on the outdoor fan motor. We have 1.1 or so there. Looks like I was mistaken. It's a Heritage 12. Oops. From 1999. And if we look on there, we can see that compressor amp draw would be 17.2 running load amps, so we're well below that. Uh, it's a pretty cool day, so we're running well below that amount. And the outdoor fan motor is 1.5, and we were at 1.1, so we're well below that too, so everything checks out as far as the amp draw co is concerned. Alright, I've, I've run the America Standard here for about 10 minutes, and basically all I want to do was get the coil wet and wash all that uh, evaporator cleaner off of it before I started out here. just don't want to leave it on there for a long period of time. Uh, I got the old, my favorite tool in the world. Thanks, John. The coil gun. I actually look forward to using the coil gun. I'll tell you what. I just enjoy it. I don't know what it is. But I'm about to coil gun this bad boy, clean it up, and then we'll get the charge and make sure the charge is correct. Alright, you can see the funk coming off this bad boy. It's probably its first cleaning in its lifetime. You know, it doesn't look that dirty from the outside, but you can just see it coming down off the coil now. It just needed a good cleaning. I didn't clean it in the fall. Uh, I typically don't clean them in the fall. I clean them once a year because uh, usually it's all we need. So. Now remember, the water pressure here wasn't that bad this time. Uh, last time it was hard to get anything out of the hose. I had to take the coil across the street to clean it at my house. Uh, but I'm about to spray this thing down and we're going to turn it on and go ahead and get our uh, efficiency measurements while we're waiting for the uh, unit to run so I can get a subcooling and superheat and things like that. Man, New Bright made this thing look good. It's quite an improvement over before. So now I should be a little bit happier condenser wise. Uh, looking good. All right, we're going to start it up. Uh, I'll get my efficiency measurements and we will calculate the charge. Well, there you have our high pressure there, 141.6. Low pressure, 56.5. Superheat's coming down. It's in the high teens. It's a little bit higher than I'd like, but uh, maybe the evaporator core like we have in there. And our, and our sub point is definitely a little high. Uh, Originally, this unit had an excessive charge in it. Someone had put a lot of refrigerant into it. I took two pounds out of it. it looks like we're still still need a little bit more out of here. Uh, the design subcooling is 10. It's been anywhere from 14 to 17, so it's just a little overcharged. What I would like to do is address that when I change the evaporator. But we'll see. See, the, the superheat's too high. Uh, that's where we stand. Uh, nice 67 degree day, and we're, we're almost in an area where you can't even check subcooling. I could block off the condenser and see what it does, but I mean, with the evaporator inside, it needs to be changed. It's really uh, pointless until we do that.